Epic Games CEO Tim Sweeney teases Fortnite returning to iOS in 2023. Ever heard of this game Fortnite, Will? Never heard of it. Uh, legal battle is continuing. We talked about alternate app stores, the EU. Talk about the EU. Apple has some basic rules, which is if you want to be on our app store, here are the rules uh, regarding payment processes you can use and our cut that we intend to take. Epic tried to get around that and Epic got owned. So they're, they're not there anymore. Today, we celebrate the anniversary of the platform unification directives. For years, they have given us their songs, their labor, their dreams. In exchange, we have taken our tribute, our profits, our control. This power is ours and ours alone. We shall prevail. In August of 2020, Epic Games broke the App Store's terms and conditions by integrating their own payment processing system into Fortnite. This led to the removal of Fortnite from the App Store and a crap ton of lawsuits, most of which Epic lost. But since then, it has sparked a massive debate about the way Apple handles the iPhone and the apps that run on it, enough to the point where governments are stepping in and writing legislation about it. And this is dangerous for all smartphone users in ways that probably the majority of you don't understand. A lot of you are probably going to be triggered and think I'm a moron after you hear what I'm about to say. But that's because the debate about this whole App Store thing has become nothing but a total black and white war with zero shades of gray. So the one thing I ask of you is this. If you can't handle watching someone else's opinion that doesn't match yours, then you might as well just stop watching. Don't even bother grabbing your keyboards and start name calling. It actually makes you look more stupid than me. But if you can tolerate other opinions, well, keep watching. <laughs> race has a massive problem, power and control. We want it so much that we are willing to compromise others for our own selfish reasons. Some think this is just a debate about Apple and third party app stores and sideloading. But I promise you, this whole debate actually has little to do with this. The real debate is about who owns your phone and who controls your phone. Don't believe me? All right, let me explain. A few years ago, Spotify put out a video on their YouTube channel known as Time to Play Fair. It was an ad trying to shame Apple for the 30% Apple tax on the App Store because Apple offers a music service of their own for less money. In this ad, Spotify claims that Apple is trying to suppress Spotify's advertising and the ability to add features like controlling playback via Siri. And FYI, Apple wasn't responsible for a lot of these complaints. Spotify has been accused for not paying full royalties, which is kind of sketchy if you ask me. And this is not because of Apple's 30% cut from the App Store, it's because of sheer negligence and greed for money. And behaviors like this should alarm others who are hosting them on their platform, like Apple for example. This isn't a battle about Spotify trying to offer more features for their users, it's a battle for money and power over Apple. Epic hasn't really done any shady stuff like what Spotify has done until they were found in violation of terms and conditions with Apple's no outside payment methods on the App Store rule. They added their own payment system to Fortnite, and it wasn't long before Apple took them off the App Store because of it. This case actually went to the court, and I'm not surprised that Epic lost the case because they seem to have forgotten how business works. But it has become very evident that suing Apple wasn't really Epic's end goal. Their real goal was to spike controversy over Apple's level of control on how the iPhone works. Again, this is a battle for power over Apple. Spotify and Epic aren't the only ones on the App Store that have been annoyed by Apple's policies. So many other developers are frustrated with how Apple forces them to do a lot of things their way. The 30% cut on all transactions does annoy them, but many developers like LTT's Floatplane also don't like how strict Apple is about what the app is and isn't allowed to do. The thing that all of their complaints have in common is they want more power and control in making their apps the way they want to. 
And thanks to Epic's case against Apple's App Store policies, it has allowed many developers to speak up and explain their frustration about limited control over how their apps are designed. And of course, this heated debate has made its way to the tech community, and debate about how big companies are doing this is of course getting the government's attention because damn, everyone just loves antitrust cases. And of course, knowing how governments are on a rampage of mandating and enforcing new regulations of the stupidest things that don't accomplish anything positive. Yeah, I had to make this video, but I'm not done yet. I have a lot more to explain. You're probably familiar with the whole iOS versus Android debate that we just can't stop arguing about. But I need to ask, why is it iOS versus Android instead of Apple versus Samsung, or Apple versus Google, or Samsung versus Google? The best answer is because the two different OSs are designed to cater towards two completely different demographics. It is no secret that Android is fundamentally more open and free, while iOS is much more locked down. I'm not going to argue about which platform is better because my needs may be different than yours, but I am going to point out that both platforms each have their own strengths and weaknesses. Android allows much more customization and personalization while iOS is more streamlined in a way that the masses can understand. Android allows a gazillion methods to do the same thing while iOS picks a single really good method. And Android allows the ability to install apps outside the Play Store while Apple's platform is much more secure due to tighter restrictions. I want to focus on that last one. Android allows their users to install apps outside of their respective App Store, the Play Store. This does allow users to install stuff on their phones that Google may not want to offer on their app store, which to Android users is a pro. However, this opens a hole for potential scam apps and hidden malware to make their way into the system and effectively ruin the user experience. Some of you may be okay with the risk and that's fine, but just because you're okay with that risk doesn't mean everybody else is. A big reason why some people choose the iPhone is malware attacks and scam apps basically never make it to your phone. Apple's process of forcing developers to only submit to one app store that Apple can filter through and remove scam apps and malware ensures a more secure platform. Some think the reason that Apple's app store makes more money than others is because the app store is a monopoly on the iPhone and has no competition. That's actually not true. Let me ask you, would you rather spend your money at a store with a reputation of potential scams or a store with actual products of meaningful value? I don't know about you, but I'd pick the second option. Okay, so what do the differences between iOS and Android have to do with this whole thing? Glad you asked. Let's tie some ends together. So the top voted comment on this article says, this makes no sense. If you start a company, build it into a huge company, do you lose your rights to operate your product as you see fit? The competition cries and cries. Okay, so make your own phones and trillion dollar company. It's like if you created a bakery and grew it into a huge chain, then Krispy Kreme complained to the government that your bakery won't let them come in and sell donuts in your stores. Like WTF kind of logic is this. If competitive app stores were allowed in the iPhone, be prepared for way more spyware and malware to slip through the cracks. Do you think Samsung polices their app store as well as Apple does? Sometimes bad apps slip through, even with Apple's much higher focus on security and privacy. So their point is, listen, this is their company, therefore somebody else should not be able to tell you what you can do with your company. Okay, let's just apply that logic here. This is your $1,000 iPhone XS. Shouldn't you be allowed to install what you want to install on your iPhone XS? I just played a clip of Lewis Rossman speaking his opinions about the matter, and funny enough, this question gets asked quite frequently. A common excuse consumers use against Apple is, Apple wants to remove my control over my iPhone, the iPhone I spent a thousand dollars on. Uh, this, th this is where you might want to click off if you can't tolerate other people's opinions. I have a lot of respect for Lewis Rossman, but this clip was not one of his finest moments because I'm about to debunk this whole excuse that even he himself backs. Do you really own your iPhone? Yes. In fact, 
yes, you do. How do I know this? Well, let me ask you some questions. People don't like how the iPhone doesn't have a headphone jack or USB-C. Does Apple stop those people from buying the iPhones and adding those ports to their device? No. Battery swaps are a common thing since batteries degrade over time. Does Apple stop you from putting in a third party battery? No. People don't like how iOS isn't as customizable and they jailbreak their devices to make it their own. Does Apple stop them? Again. No. So if Apple owned these devices and the software that runs on them, then wouldn't they be in the right to send the authorities to seize them and sue you for doing such a thing? The only way Apple could sue you is if you basically just reverse engineer their phone and start making your own versions of the same product. Like, th that's basically it. You know those special luxury edition iPhones caviar cells? Those are iPhones they bought from Apple and modified to be more luxurious and exclusive. I have yet to see Apple stop caviar from doing this. So when you ask, do you really own your iPhone? The answer is always yes. That question is just an excuse to be mad at Apple. So then why won't Apple let me download apps from outside of the app store? Didn't I just answer that question? All right, let's connect the dots. As I stated before, Apple forces developers to only submit apps to their app store to ensure security, less scamming and malware activity on the platform they designed. Emphasis on the word designed. Apple owns the rights to the designs of the iPhone's hardware and software, like how artists hold the rights to the art they create. What they are really selling you is a copy of the hardware and software that Apple designed and developed, just like how artists will sell you a copy of their work. I'm stating this to remind everyone about who designs the iPhone. Apple does. Not Spotify, not Epic, not even you. We don't design the iPhone from the ground up. We can buy what Apple designed and then modify it, but it is not up to us to tell Apple how to design it in the first place. That task lies entirely with Apple. It's not our say. This is why everyone wants to take Apple to court. The thinking is, if Apple won't let me do the things my way instead of Apple's way, then I'll have Uncle Sam force Apple to do what I want. Kind of like say if you didn't like how your older brother handles being in charge and you complain to your parents that he won't let you eat an entire pail of ice cream. This is what most court cases are like. Apple won't do what I want or Apple did something I don't like. They'll bring Apple to court and waste their time over petty complaints. Governments have been upset over the removal of power bricks included in the box, a complaint I find so petty. I never needed all those bricks that have come with all the phones I bought because I already have my own anyways. The majority of complaints that people send the government are things that just aren't our say. It's not up to us to design a more intrusive method of a camera cutout. It's not up to us to pick such an ugly camera bump design. It's not up to us to make tinkering with the iPhone easy to subject the user to fewer security measures. It's not up to us to figure out how we can expand the functionality of the iPhone while keeping it and their users secure. Why? Because we aren't the ones in charge of designing it. We can make suggestions to Apple about what we'd like to see, but that does not mean Apple has to take every one of those suggestions to heart. You're not the designer. We are not the designer. Apple is. So if we have no say in how Apple designs their products and the way they work, what can we do if we are still not happy with what Apple is doing? Now, you might get mad at me for what I'm about to say, but here's my suggestion. DON'T BUY IT! Let me remind you how a sale works. Apple, the producer, designs a product in hopes that a market will buy it. We, the consumers, take a look at what the producer has to offer and compare it to what we're looking for. To do this, we should be asking questions like, what value does this add to me? Does this prioritize what I'm looking for? Is there anything about this product that would set me back? Let me integrate these questions better into comparing the iPhone. Does the iPhone add value to me? 
The value I found I'm getting out of it is basically it's a Swiss Army knife of gadgets combined into one. Does it prioritize what I'm looking for? It has the best camera for recording videos on any smartphone, good enough to use in even higher production situations where traditional cinema cameras aren't practical. Its ability to communicate very well with other devices like my laptop that I use for editing footage shot on that camera. It's more secure and less prone to hacking than most other phones, and support is longer than any other smartphone in existence. Is there anything about this product that would set me back? Color science isn't exactly my favorite, so it requires just a little tuning. SMS and MMS communication with non-Apple devices sucks, and the Lightning port is a proprietary standard that's slower than the open standard most Androids and even some of Apple's own devices use. Based on my values, I deduce that the iPhone is the best choice for me, but maybe your values might not be the same and could lead to the iPhone not being a good choice for you. You can't just buy some random phone off a random vendor and get mad at the vendor because the phone isn't tailored to your values. That's like going to a store for a box of cereal without reading the label and then getting mad at the brand because you had an allergic reaction due to some nuts mixed in. So if the iPhone doesn't live up to what you value, then don't buy it. And if you're a developer that's frustrated with Apple's policies, then reconsider whether you want to work with them or not. Do you value having access to a customer base on a large platform, or is working with Apple's policies not worth the time and frustration? A funny thing about this is some developers actually like the way Apple does things. Apple's development platform offers a lot of items like SwiftUI to make your app look like Apple's own iOS apps. Some don't mind that Apple forces you to use their own payment system for in-app purchases because it saves them the hassle of having to figure out how to process a payment. And Apple also hosts your app on their server so you don't even have to worry about hosting. But I know, some developers may find these features useless. But again, if you don't like what Apple is offering you, then don't buy it. Another excuse that I wanted to debunk, Apple is not a monopoly. If they were, then Android wouldn't exist. Last I checked, Samsung, Google, OnePlus, they're all still selling phones. In case you hadn't noticed, the government is in the process of writing legislation to change Apple's methods of installing apps. The EU is in the process of forcing Apple to do things the Android way already. And this is bad. Why? Competition drives innovation and allows people more options to choose from. But in this case, they want Apple to take a perfectly good thing about the iPhone that has benefited users for years and throw it in the trash. The government, I kid you not, wants to do the exact opposite of what the antitrust cases is supposed to do. They are literally trying to remove the option of better security on a platform and forcing us to pick the other option, leaving us with only one option. If the government were to force Apple to allow installing apps from outside the app store, then yes, security goes out the window. Some people suggest maybe Apple could instead have to inspect the apps after you downloaded them from outside the app store. But I can confidently tell you what's going to happen next. People are going to complain about how Apple is denying installing apps for security reasons. Guys, this is one of those scenarios where you can't have both options. If you want the flexibility of installing apps outside the app store, then security is subjected to sketchy.app.download.com. If you really want security, then you will be subjected to the filter on the App Store. You can't turn left and right at the same time. You can't have it both ways. So if Apple did it the way the government wants it done, then we lose our choice for security. To sum things up, people are demanding something from Apple when it is not their call. What they should be doing is re-evaluating whether they should be buying the iPhone in the first place. I'll help make this easier. If you know that you absolutely can't have Android and need to have an iPhone, then be prepared for the challenge to really customize. Some people like jailbreaking iPhones because Apple makes it a challenge 
to have Android levels of customization. So if you don't mind the challenge, then maybe sticking with the iPhone is fine. But the majority of you probably don't like dealing with challenges considering the majority of haters just go to the government and complain about things that aren't even up to them to decide. If this is you, then you're not looking for an iPhone. You're looking for an Android. Let me make something very clear. I may prefer iOS, but this does not mean I despise Android. I may not like how Android does a few things, but that does not mean Android is unusable. If I found Android to be truly terrible, then I would have made a rant video on them already. One of the best ways we can tell brands we have a problem with them is to vote with our wallets. If you like what Apple is offering you, buy it. If you don't, then look and see what else is out there. But we do not dictate to any brand how to do something. Our role as consumers, or in the case of developers, partners, is to either take or leave what the producer is offering us. Great job sticking with me through this whole video. This is my opinion on the matter, but if yours differs, feel free to respectfully Share your opinion in the comments. Thank you for watching. Do me a favor and interact with the stuff below. My name is Alpha Day Wolf, Random Alpha, signing out.